Dr. Eva Sodling, also from the University of Turku, is best known for her work on mother-child transmission. Her presentation was titled, Caries as a Process and a Transmissible Disease. And she started by briefly outlining the importance of diet in caries prevention. It was pointed out that the frequency of food intakes is more important than the amount of sucrose in the diet. With Italy being the home of the pizza, it was fitting that she used it as an illustration. Most of the topping, she explained, was fine for the teeth. But the heated carbohydrate base was not much better for the teeth than the arch-criminal sucrose. Most common carbs and other sugars are readily transformed to plaque acids by pathogenic oral bacteria, with one notable exception, xylitol. Products sweetened exclusively with xylitol have considerably better dental health benefits than other sugar-free products, and they can and should be used after meals and snacks to stop the acid production in plaque. This is because of the unique effect that xylitol has on the oral bacteria, and not just because of salivary stimulation. The use of xylitol is a perfect adjunct to current caries prevention methods, and not necessarily a replacement. Referring to a graph from a study headed by J. Carlson in 1975, Dr. Sodling explained that lactobacilli and the good bacteria Streptococcus sanguis and salivarius are present in an infant's mouth virtually from birth, but that strep mutans is generally introduced from about 12 months. Of the various factors that affect the parent-to-child transmission, one of the most important is that the salivary mutans count in the parent needs to be greater than 100,000 per milliliter, which may sound like a lot, but is actually quite common even in people with beautiful teeth. With reference to the mechanisms of action, Dr. Sodling pointed out that all polyols reduce acid production in the plaque, whereas xylitol produces no acid at all. Furthermore, it decreases the actual amount of plaque, substantially reduces not only the strep mutans count, but also its transmission from mother to child and has an extremely important remineralization effect. Referring to one of her earlier studies, she demonstrated that xylitol inhibits plaque accumulation as well as its subsequent regrowth by up to 50%. The subjects found that the xylitol plaque, containing fewer adhesive polysaccharides, was far easier to remove and that their teeth felt much cleaner. This reduction of plaque combined with a decrease in its stickiness is extremely important for the inhibition of caries and periodontal diseases. Dr. Sodling referred to various studies by Drs. Mackinnon, Allenon and Milgram showing that for caries control or prevention, xylitol should be used at least three times a day after meals and that the optimal daily dosage should ideally be between five to six grams her own groundbreaking mother-child study was done to find out if a mother's xylitol use could affect the vertical transmission of strep mutans. 195 mothers were divided into two groups, xylitol and the fluoride group. The xylitol group used 100% xylitol gum at 6 to 8 grams of xylitol per day during the period in which their children were 3 to 24 months old. The children themselves received no preventatives. At the end of the period, in the fluoride control group, slightly fewer than 50% of the children were colonized with strep mutans. By contrast, in the xylitol group, the colonization level was just under 10%. The study didn't end there, however. The children continued to be monitored for caries occurrence. And by the age of five, the need for restorative treatment in the xylitol group was 71% lower than in the fluoride group. Most importantly, it was only the colonized 10% in the xylitol group that had any caries at all. The other 90% were caries free. The overall conclusion was that the importance of early intervention cannot be overemphasized. 
If one can stop colonization before dentition, one can prevent caries, not just control it. When the cohort reached the age of 10, a thesis by Dr. Leitala showed that the same trends continued. This clearly demonstrates that early xylitol use results in primary prevention of caries. Dr. Sodling then referred to the Swedish mother-child study by Thorold, Lindau and Twetman, where a similar process was followed. There were three groups, xylitol, fluoride and chlorhexidine, all in chewing gum form. However, the daily dose of xylitol was only two grams. Nevertheless, at both the 18-month and four-year stages, both mutans colonization and caries occurrence were lowest in the xylitol group by a significant margin. In an as yet unpublished study in Japan, mothers were given a 4 gram daily dose of xylitol during pregnancy. Again, the mutans and caries counts were significantly lower, thus helping corroborate previous findings. In closing, Dr. Sodling identified which groups of people would benefit most from xylitol use, stressing the importance of xylitol being the main ingredient and preferably the only sweetener. She also discussed some new approaches to presenting xylitol in combination with other functionally synergistic substances like fluoride, plant extracts and probiotics. Final recommendations were then made with regard to effective dosages and frequency under different conditions.